Aloha, I'm Danny, your second chance Ohana tool girl. And I'm Sherry, also known as mom. And today we're going to be teaching you how to get professional results painting your interior walls with tools you probably already have at home. All right, you guys, so first thing you're going to want to do is just gather together everything you're going to need, your paint, your primer, and all your supplies. We found that setting up a table really helps to keep all our supplies close at hand. So you're going to want everything from your wash rags and buckets, your primer, your paint, your brushes, and we'll list our favorite cutting in brushes down below in the description, but even your ladders, your stools, your trays, your rollers. And don't forget the extension pole for the roller. That is, that is a life uh -oh. <laughs> saver <laughs> <laughs> and it's great you don't even need to buy one if you've got a broom you have an extension pole ready to go that's what we used the next step to getting professional results with your wall painting is prep don't you roll your eyes at me you know prep is what's going to make this amazing and give you those professional results yes it takes more time but really in the long run, it is going to save you time because you're gonna get better looking results and it's going to last much longer, meaning you don't have to redo this anytime soon. All right, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clear your walls. That includes the switch plates and the outlet covers. And any artwork, get rid of those nails, fill the nail holes, I promise. You'll thank me later so you're not having to come back and redo this. Yeah, this is real easy. You just take a little tiny bit of spackle and just spread it on the wall. You don't need to sand it. And then you're going to want to clean your walls really well because paint can't stick to greasy, dirty walls. Yeah, absolutely. And I heard afterwards another tip. You can use your mop on the wall. It goes much quicker. So last, tape off all of your edges that you don't want to get paint on. Unless you're amazing at cutting in, you just don't want to have to sand down any wood or other surfaces. And you want to protect from the drips. And we love frog tape, you guys. Spend the money oh, because it's the best. frog tape is worth it. It really is. Our next step is to prime the walls. You don't always have to prime, but it's a really good idea if you want professional results. When you open up your primer or any paint for that matter, make sure to spend time stirring and stirring well, because I'm sure you've noticed paint likes to separate. And then, you know, because we're a couple little old ladies. I speak for yourself there, chickadee. Okay, even if I had the strength to pour a five gallon bucket full of paint, it'd be a mess. So we've actually started using this ladle that we've designated for paint to fill up our trays and our bowls and it actually has kept things so much cleaner. And keep a, a few uh, damp pieces of paper towels around too. It just really helps to clean off all those edges before you have to um, store your paint again Absolutely. or put the lid on. Absolutely. That way it won't stick the next time. So some people don't prime and that's okay but we chose to prime because, well, a couple of reasons. First, the existing color of our walls is darker than the color that we're going to be putting on. So it was either do at least two coats of the new paint, which is really expensive, or prime and do one coat of paint. And the other reason is because uh, the the paint that's on our walls is a semi-gloss, so it's real slick. And that primer really helps to um, for the new paint to bond to the walls. Yeah, it really helps that adhesion. One of our favorite tips we learned years ago was in between painting coats, instead of cleaning out your roller and your brushes every time, instead just load them with paint and cover them with grocery bags. And that is going to keep them 
liquidy and wet and ready to go for the next use. Because if you're spending all that time cleaning it out, not only are you wasting a bunch of paint, but you're wasting a bunch of time. Well, how long does that last? Can you let it sit for like six months? I may or may not know from experience that it can last at least four months in the fridge as long as it was loaded with paint. <laughs> and it survived just fine. I cleaned it and it turned out great oh like it was gosh. brand new. <laughs> oh my gosh. There are some easy painting techniques that are gonna give you great results. So your painting is broken up into two steps. You're gonna cut in all the tight spaces and you're rolling. So our favorite tips for cutting in, and it's kind of hard to see because this brush has already been used a handful of times, but I really recommend only dipping your brush in about one to two inches of paint. And you're gonna kind of dip it, like dip it a lot and then brush off the excess so it's loaded with paint on the inside, but it's not drippy. And then when I am doing corners, I kind of start in the middle of the wall because if I start right in the corner by the ceiling, it's going to drip and get all over the place. Ooh, look at you go, girl. And I don't know if it matters. We've heard that you should cut in first. We've kind of done it both ways. We haven't noticed a difference. And as with loading paint onto a brush, you're going to do the same thing with the roller. You're going to load it with a lot of paint, get it really full, but then roll off that excess back into the pan before you start rolling on the wall. Mom, you're going to get drips all over your floor. Aha! Uh -huh. That's true. If, you're, uh, if you don't want paint all over your floor, you better put down a drop cloth. We don't have to because we're getting new floors. That's true. All right, so I'm going to start right about in the center of the wall, not right in the corner, but over an, an inch or two. And just roll, you know, just kind of roll up and down and really get it covered. We have really heavily textured walls. Mom, so you're not using the W method. The W method. Okay, well, there is that is quite the controversy, isn't it? I've tried the W method. It doesn't work for me. It's just a mess and it's awkward. And I don't really get any different results. Huh? No, no. I've seen other pros just go straight up and down, and they it seems to work for them, and it works for me. So I notice that you do have a method. So right now you're painting towards the left and the little bar connector is on the left. Is there a reason for that? The little bar connector. Oh yeah, like the little L thing. Yeah. Um, the reason is because usually when you're rolling on the wall, you're, there's a little bit uneven pressure on the roller. So where it's connected to the bar, it may leave some extra, a heavy amount of paint. And either you're going to see that, that texture after everything's all dry, or it's going to form drips. And we do not want drips, and we do not want heavy paint texture. If you're getting some thick paint like this, you're just going to want to lighten your pressure and go ahead and just roll right over it, and it'll even out. So one other thing that you really need to remember is that as the paint is drying, it's gonna look splotchy. Don't mess with it. By that time, it is like, when it's half dry, you're not gonna be able to fix it, it's gonna look worse. And I have fallen prey to this many times. I'm like, oh, it looks a little weird here, and I try to go over it, I just make it worse every time. Yeah. So just wait for the next coat. Yeah, you either get heavy brush strokes or, you know, the paint comes off of the wall on, back onto a roller. I don't know. It's weird. Just don't do it. You may have noticed I have not taped off the ceiling here when I'm cutting in. Shame on you. <laughs> Stop. No, it's just it's not really necessary because we're using a light color. And if I get anything on the ceiling, I just keep a wet paper towel close by and you can wipe it right off. But really, if you have a steady hand, a great cutting in brush, you're going to do just fine doing it by hand without taping. And you are good at it. And it definitely saves my neck from having to look up 
and lining that like that is just a pain. I know taping is harder than painting, I think. Mm -hmm. We hope you learned something today and you have new tips and techniques ready to paint your next room. Aloha! Aloha.